Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Zero Strategy Game and we're returning to our Fridays for Future Let's Play or Fate of the World the Climate Change Game. So the year is 2100 so we've played for nearly 100 years now, 90 years to be more precise and I'm extremely happy because finally, finally in, in just the last decade or so we've been able to make a very very great breakthrough in cutting our carbon emissions. It's been an amazingly difficult run. Uh, most importantly Initially we started to reduce North American and European emissions, but the emissions in India and China were very very hard to tackle and some of the other countries as well, truly South Africa for a very long time uh, was a very large emitter and they still are. They are the only country or region where emissions are still coming up so that is something that we do need to consider. Right, we have also discovered quite a couple of important technologies. So in Europe we've discovered first generation nanotech and that does allow us to deploy artificial trees. Let's look at the card for this. So here we go. Direct mass construction of carbon absorbing installations in Europe greatly mitigate emissions. So we are actively pulling emissions or carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and that is very nice, very very nice. Uh, we'll have to fund this continuously but at $20 it's or mega bucks it's not that important and this actually means that Europe in particular is the first region to not only be carbon neutral but actually suck some carbon out of the atmosphere so that is an extremely great way to see it. Uh, we have to be a little bit concerned though because we did also play uh, a card that would allow us to over here somewhere no longer use natural gas in agriculture or even in the industry so that is very good for us but same with oil but the issue with that is that we're using now more uh, directly energy to produce the stuff uh, that we are being that that is being used. So we are using more energy over here, and that is not only renewable technology. We actually use coal again in Europe, so that is not so great. On the other hand, these artificial trees are very very important. Also, in North America, we've no, we are very close to discovering uh, first generation fusion technology. So that is very very great for us, and very lovely indeed. We had about 9.5 billion people, 9.4 billion people on the Earth, so that's uh, to be considered. We are also 2.3 degrees above pre-industrial temperatures, so that is beyond the Paris Accords, but it is uh, within the rim parameters of the game, so if we are going above 3%, uh, 3 degrees we'd be losing. And if we go... if we manage to keep below 2.5, and we'll actually get extra points, so that would be very nice. We are currently using a lot of geoengineering just to ensure that, um, and I think we'll continue to do that. But so the first priority this turnaround will be to get everyone to uh, deploy these uh, artificial trees as well. We play this turn a little bit differently compared to all the other ones, so uh, we'll have a look at the news over here. So everything more or less seems to be ooh, reforestation. That's nice to see. There are some fires and, and all of that, but I've uh, gone through the news in all in all territories already. And it's only really in Japan and Oceania where we need to be afraid <coughs> of uh, some droughts. So over here I did already play the card to adapt to heat and droughts. That's a card you need to play continuously to have any effect. Um, but Or you every turn um, it, you're playing it, it does have some effect, but you have to fund it continually. But I do think that makes sense. I want to avoid wildfires basically and that should be all right. So uh, let's lo look at all the regions and deploy the artificial trees where possible. So in Russia, in China, note that these emissions are always a little bit different um, and these are definitely cards that we'll want to fund pretty much continuously uh, for all the time. Can't do so in North, Northern Africa yet so we'll have to acquire technology over here just to get the, to the first generation nanotech here it's going to be super tensile materials so let's acquire that. Middle East, here we'll need to acquire the technology itself. Same in South Asia. Japan should have it, so we are going to deploy artificial trees. Latin America, nope, you'll also need to acquire first generation non technology. Same in Southern Africa, you might already have it. No you don't. Oh, you need to acquire the super tensile material first, that's alright. And then down here in Oceania, yeah, we can play these guys as well. 
That's very, very good. That's that's extremely good for us. So that will bring down emissions by, by quite a lot, uh, even my next turn. So that's going to be great. We also should briefly look at how people feel about their consumerist outlook. So in Japan, Oceania, I would like to play consumerist materialist. So I would like to play a little bit more of the aerosols. We're playing that in Japan and Oceania already. We are playing that potentially in the Middle East. We are not. No, we are. And in Russia? We're not playing that in Russia yet, so I think Russia might be a very nice place to play that. And it's going to bring down temperature a little bit further, so that's going to be okay. Because the problem with emissions is, of course, that we're still increasing the parts per million uh, of atmospheric concentration of CO2. So this is still going up because we are still net pumping something into the atmosphere. So that is something that we will need to consider. Uh, also, some other great news is that in Europe we have been playing... So firstly, in, in Europe the cap and trade emission is coming down, so that's nice to see. We are not using any of this, but more importantly... Where is it? We have launched the Space Solar Array, so that will allow, allow us to uh, actually collect solar energy in space and then bring it back towards... Um, ooh, border security is not good. And then bring it back towards the Earth so that we can have more technology over here, or more uh, renewables over here. I do think it makes some sense to play renewables over here, just to reduce the amount of um, carbon dioxide that we are still producing from electricity, specifically coal and all of that, so just increase renewables a little bit more to compare to what they are. We should also look at technology because Europe is uh, researching second generation nanotech but I think Japan over here, uh, firstly Japan has finished the desalination plants so that's great to see so robotics is all researched um, but you'd not be that far behind on second generation nanotechnology so what we might actually want to do over here is do some research, materials research program over here in Japan instead of Europe. Or maybe at the same time as Europe. But let's try that out. Right, other than that, I think um, Europe is doing fairly well. Except for some jobs, maybe. We could play the artificial biomes over here, just to make sure that we are producing a little bit more. Organic farming, I don't think, does anything for us. Agriculture would use a little bit less energy, but all in all we are fine, so I think I'm going to be happy with this. Could play the Tobin tax, if there's nothing else that we do want to do. And we could try to play the Moonbase Alpha, so there's a chance that this will fail, but it would increase global literacy, give us a large boost in support, and would enable us to um, extract uh, Helium-3 for second generation fusion technology. Um, that's going to be some way down the line. But if we do have the money left over, I think it might make sense to play this and start building up our uh, space stuff a little bit. Asteroid mining I don't think is that important. The manned mission to Mars would be nice, but it's really not going anywhere. Right, other than that, uh, the big other news of course was that Japan was deploying the desalination plants or researching the desalination plants. These do give access to fresh water and there are a couple of regions where fresh water is a big issue. We can see that over here on the water stress front. Uh, here in, Ch in Japan it's 17%. That's not really that bad, but in Northern Africa it should be much, much worse. Yeah, 44%. Middle East is one of the countries where regions where it's one pretty bad at 36, as is India. So these three regions we're going to try to get to the, uh, to the desalination plants, and we might have to acquire some technologies first. Yeah, so the benthic depressurization is something that we do need to acquire. Over here in the Middle East, well, everything seems to be more or less fine. Uh, I think I'm going to switch out of the eco-awareness campaign for a second here just to acquire this. And in India, we are also acquire the benthic depressurization, and that's going to be all right. Uh, something else that we might want to do in Europe is extend a global ban on stuff. So first generation biofuels would be something that I would like to see about abolished. Okay, let's get rid of the turbine tax for a second. Either global first generation biofuels, uh, they are really not that that efficient. Second generation and third generations are much, much more efficient, so that would be great. We are close, I think, to 
being able to disallow coal, but for now we are not. Global ban of shale and tight gas might be nice because uh, these things are con contaminating the water table in, in some regions. So it would be good to just ban that entirely. But we might have to do that in the regions where we're actually experiencing some water stress. So for now, I'm going to go ahead with first generation biofuels. So the difference here is that I think first generation biofuels are a direct conversion of foodstuffs. Second generation biofuel is uh, the stuff that gets left over in the food production. So basically everything of a plant that you can't eat. And third generation biofuels actually algae tanks uh, of gene that are genetically modified just to produce exactly that. Right, that's a very nice set for Europe and for some of the other countries. So um, let's actually go by country and see whether there's anything that we do need to do. Southern Africa is a very interesting example, I think, because uh, we were actually we should see that we have played coal no longer used in industry. So we've reduced the coal usage in industry, but is that actually a good thing? Because uh, we will be using electricity instead. And if we do look at the potentially coal usage, we can see that coal usage, it's not being used in the industry anymore, so we've dropped to zero, but you can see the energy consumption has increased so much that we're actually using more coal just to power the electricity to then power the uh, the industrial plants. So that didn't go quite as, uh, quite as well as expected, uh, but it's gonna be all right because in the long term we are committing to renewables and our renewable energy production should go up uh, very significantly. Yeah, you can see solar actually actually increased by a very, very significant amount here, but coal was required to take up some of the extra load as well. So yeah, as we expand this, I think uh, the coal production will go down a little bit and that's gonna be all right because we are playing commit to renewables. Right, um, other than that, I don't think, well, we could acquire second generation biofuels or something like that, um, that wouldn't be entirely bad. We could. Uh, switch the transport to electricity but that would have the same uh, problem as the industry so actually over here there's not that much that we do need to do for this very moment I mean water infrastructure wouldn't be entirely bad there's some water stress there's also some forestry change uh, but overall I don't think there's much that we do need to do over here Well, I guess we could play turbine tax, or we could acquire. Well, acquire, acquiring desalination doesn't really help us that much. Acquiring second generation biofuels might help us a little bit, but you know what? I do want to tax South Africa. Also, I think there might be an achievement there, so uh, that might might be nice. Right. Uh, let's also look at the biggest polluters. The biggest polluters are Southern Africa, Southern Asia, actually, and the Middle East. So. South Asia is an interesting example as well because I think a lot of the emissions here do still come from the transport uh, way and, and that is the fuel oil uh, that we do see over here. So I think it might actually make sense to build up a couple of roads over here uh, and well trades and all of that so that this is decreased. We are acquiring first generation nanotech so that's going to be all right. Everything else is not really that bad though. We are committing to renewable so that is Pretty good as well. Protecting the land should all, always be very high, a nice priority. Bionic decontamination. Ooh, this is interesting. So, release custom-made nanobots into the environment to neutralize dangerous comp compounds. This is interesting. I thought you'd have, you'd need to have first-generation biotechs. Does not remove the source of toxicity. Ooh, that'd be great to play. That'd especially be great to play in India where I think we are seeing a lot of toxicity uh, basically this symbol all the time so we, we really need to play that over there in southern Asia though cap and trade we're acquiring this being more efficient being more efficient protecting everything yeah I think this is all in all this is pretty okay uh, so we're gonna go with this India all of these are pretty important as well and we can't acquire, we, we can't play the same card over here, so I wonder why that is. Must have to do with the super tensile materials. Yeah, okay. Nevertheless, India looks fine to me. Uh, Middle East, we were looking at that already. We are acquiring a couple of technologies. We are deploying stuff. All in all, I think we are doing okay over here. We are also committing to re renewables, and that should be fine. 
and second generation biofuels would always be great. China is actually already playing artificial uh, trees, so that's also very nice to see. We could do synthetic feedstocks over here in China, and that might not be the worst idea. So if we look at that, if we look at the emissions where they are coming from, it's mostly agricultural emissions. And it would be nice to do feedstocks for the agricultural sector uh, on a synthetic basis, but that would increase electricity usage. And that would potentially mean that we are again using more gas and all the other stuff. So we are committing to renewables though, so that should be all right. And I think, yeah, I think we might want to play this card then. Abandon high yield crops? No. Bionic decontamination. That'd be so great. That'd be actually very, very nice, wouldn't it? How's your water stress? Well, it's always a little bit high over here. Toxicity index is bad, but not really bad. Toxicity is coming down as well. It's nice to see. It's mostly actually coming from the few from fuel usage. Still, I'm tempted to play this card. Artificial biomes would also be nice, just to make sure that everyone is fine. Deploy sulfates. Uh, I'm not too sure on this one. Hmm. Certainly don't want to expand coal production. Don't want to play one child policy. I think China is actually doing pretty well. So we could Tobin tax you. Hmm. Let's go for the bionic decontamination instead. Um, let's just look at all of these re regions. I think Russia doesn't really need this. Where is your energy coming from? Your energy is coming from? Hmm, sort of everything. Shouldn't you really be committing to renewables? Probably are replacing coal in the industry, weren't you? Oh uh, yeah, you were replacing that, so let's actually commit to renewables over here in Russia. I think that should be a very nice fit to everything else. Europe we looked at North America. We don't really have that much place to place further down further cards, mostly due to the research programs. But all in all, I think we are doing fine-ish. Definitely want to continue researching these things. Well, we could get rid of the Tobin tax, I guess. And go for synthetic feed socks. Yeah, that does make a certain amount of sense. Northern Africa, we looked at everything here, seems to be fine. Middle East, yes. South Asia, yes. Japan. We've adapted to, we have got the adaptation to draws, we've are playing the artificial trees. All of these seem to be fine to me. Latin America then is one of the few countries where we're not playing everything so far. And just how is it looking? We are switching our transport to electricity over here. So I would think that electricity is a little bit strained, isn't it? Well it's coming up. And coming up very drastically, but it's mostly, it's exclusively from renewables. So that's that's fantastic to see, actually. Very, very nice. So we don't even need to uh, do more of that. We are expanding the biofuels production. We could acquire the high yield crops. That might not be the worst. We are acquiring nanotechnology already, so that'd be great. Water management doesn't seem to be necessary over here. Yeah, let's acquire high yield crops. Southern Africa, you are fine with what you're doing, I think. Don't necessarily need the to the Tobin tax. India, well, you're doing fine. Yeah, everything seems to be fine, so I think we might be getting in two turns over here. So actually, we don't need to play the Tobin tax over here. And we could instead. Well, might be a little bit too early for this. Let's do water management. It's never really a bad idea, so I think that's going to be okay. And we're going, going to go for the next turn. Forced migration, 2 million. That's interesting. Um, global emissions. Increased by a little bit. I don't quite understand this, but... Temperature actually seems to be coming down a little bit. 
no, 2.3 degrees, so we are fine. Uh, but maybe first generation fusion breakthrough. Lunar colony, uh, lunar colony mission departs. So following years of preparation, the first GEO sponsored Lunar Pioneer Team were finally launched into space to commence construction of a permanent human presence on the moon. The world awaits with bated breath at the outcome. Solar power on a rainy day, congratulations dude, the orbital solar thermal collection system you initiated has been successfully commissioned. It is now beaming plentiful supplies of energy down to the Earth's surface. Solar power is no longer at the mercy of the weather. That's also very, very good. Just look at this, decrease, decrease. Why? Annual emissions have decreased by 108%. That looks fantastic, guys. That's lo that looks perfect. I think we might actually be on a very very low missions path over here excellent news so another very significant breakthrough in annual missions of course global emissions are still rising and there is a breakthrough at, at which point we are doing too much forcing down here but for now that's very great news so storms are of course not that great right that's fantastic that's that's actually very good news and I think that's mostly due to the artificial trees that we are playing in a lot of the regions. Right, a brief check of the news over here. Just a couple of wildfires. Luna thing is departing. Hopefully that's going to work out. Agricultural emissions have been decreased. That's nice to see. Reforestation continues. All of that seems to be pretty good. And we've got the solar array. So I think we're now getting most of our stuff from renewables, don't we? Not quite that much, actually. Funny enough, we are replacing solar energy, uh, sorry, yeah, solar energy by wind energy and tidal power stuff. But yeah, we've got a couple of other things in there as well. Right, we could do asteroid mining, but it wouldn't be too bad. All of these other things, I think, are fine. We don't really need to that, do that. We don't have any water stress here, do we? Just a tiny bit. I mean, water stress program is never bad. First generation fusion technology might be pretty good for Europe because it's our global headquarter. And sometimes you can get funny uh, effects over there, so that'd be great. Shale gas, banning shale gas might not be the worst idea ever. Artificial biomes would decrease extinction levels. Which will also be pretty good, I mean... Also, let's check. So this is take, going to take 52 years now, and in Japan, we are where we're also researching this, it would be taking just one turn more, I think. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it going in, in both areas. I know it's not super efficient, but I do want to keep the flexibility to maybe switch out of that in Europe. And if we do get it one turn earlier, that's also pretty good. Right, so why not play artificial biomes just to prevent any extinction from happening over here? That might be okay. And yeah, we did check the news to, to see whether there was any, any rot or anything. Let's briefly do that in all of the countries, just checking for any red news over here. Nope, doesn't seem like it. Joblessness is a problem in China, apparently. Interestingly enough. So we've got some droughts here in North America. So in North America we should probably play the adaptation to drought. Wanna prevent any wildfires basically. Northern Africa is uh, struggling with water stress, as is potentially the Middle East. Japan? No droughts, so we can uh, get rid of this. Oceania. Less sunshine. No, 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 all of this is okay. Nationalism is on the rise and immigration reaching a flashpoint in Oceania. So that is something that we do need to deal with Where is the number of refugees here? It's pretty bad and I think that's mostly due to the water stress in some other areas Unfortunately, there's not that much that we can do for this could do with the jobless initiative just to get rid of we are playing the in integration anyway So let's do job sharing initiative and that might be okay. And on the other hand, there's no draw to be expected over here, so we can get rid of this. That's fine. Water stress in India. And actually, gas drilling. Tight gas, that is a problem. 
And we are seeing some storms over here, so let's play the adaptation to improved storm defenses. And down here, drought in southern Africa. So adaptation to drought is certainly a good idea. And Latin America? Nope, everything seems to be fine. Okay, fair, very good. Right, so on the global level, we were seeing emissions coming down very significantly. And let's go through all of the regions to check whether they now could be playing artificial trees. Um, or whether they do in fact have already got artificial trees. So all of these seem to be doing fine. Over here, Northern Africa. I think you still potentially need to acquire the nanotechnology. Yeah, it's sufficiently far away. Uh, Middle East, I think, has acquired this, so you should now whoop, you should now be able to play the artificial trees. Yes, there we go. South Africa, uh, South Asia, sorry, the same. Japan already has got it. South Africa, is Latin America, Southern Africa, India. India doesn't, so let's acquire the technology. You've got that already. Great. Very good result. Okay, so, and what was the bad news in North America again? I think we were seeing something weird over here. No, not really. Okay. Yeah, just a little rewards. Water stress. Okay, so let's try to do with the water stress in North America, Middle East, and India. We should be able to acquire the desalination plants. Have you got that already? Yeah, I think you might. So yeah, we can do the desalination program. That's going to improve water production, so that be it's going to be nice. And down here in India, we potentially need to still acquire the technology. Okay, so we are on a good path over there, so that should help us a little bit. I think in China there was some joblessness. Yeah, that was it. 20 to 40%. 24% joblessness, okay. On the other hand, the bi bionic decontamination seems to have helped out a little bit. Yeah, there are some shortages over here. But at least we are going with afforestation. And here you can see just plus 30% solar capacity. That's extremely good. Yeah, and we are no longer using, so emissions here should be very much down, especially from agriculture. Agricultural emissions are down dramatically and where you come where's your electricity coming from yeah, a little bit of everything I think uranium is is a big issue that it's currently running out but at the very least we are producing more electricity so from renewables and we are committing to renewables still yeah so that's great I think you have fulfilled your cap and trade things so that's good to see Oh, by the way, did we get any news about the detoxification organic salts restoration program? No, I think that's potentially due to this card. Okay, fine, still. Gonna be happy with this. Artificial biomes, always a good choice. Don't really need the acquire thermo ionic desalination. We could get fusion technology. I think China is such a energy hungry thing that over here might be one of the places where that might make sense. And let's also play the jobless sharing initiative. I think that's going to be okay. Right, Russia then. How are things looking in Russia? Um, pretty well actually, so all of these are good cards, obviously. Synthetic feedstocks, okay, so how is your electricity generation looking? It's all renewables. I mean, just since this turn, but I think there is some slack in the system, so that actually means we can potentially play both the synthetic feedstocks and the switch to uh, the transport to electricity. Probably doesn't make sense to play both of them at the same time, uh, but you know what, I think it's going to be okay. And um, that should work out fairly well overall. It's probably going to use more electricity next turn, but in, in the midterm it might make sense. Right, North America, you are fine now. Northern Africa, is there anything else that we can do for your water systems? Oh, also, your electricity seems to be at 100% renewables, isn't it? Yeah, apparently fantastic. Pretty good. Well done. Good job. Right, so what else can we do then? We could switch over the transport oh, and we could do coal-free industry. I think coal-free industry has the slightly higher priority. All of the other ones seem to be fine, though. And I'm guessing that we do... 
run close to 100% renewables anyway over here as well. Yeah, it is 100% renewable. So uh, let's go for, well, doesn't matter. Transport, I think. There's only one card left. And in South Asia. Hmm, all of these do make sense, especially the transport efficiency. I prefer that a little bit to, sw to switching uh, to electricity transport. We are still co committing to renewables, um, so I'm guessing we are not at 100%. No, we are not. So, yeah, I think that's all in all pretty fine. Yeah, seems, seems fine to me. Japan, then. What can we do over here? Well, you are already doing very... Uh, well, we could do renewables, couldn't we? shouldn't we? Okay, yeah, let's commit to renewables. Latin America, you are at 100% renewables. We're expanding biofuel, so we could acquire the third generation biofuels here, actually. Yeah, let's acquire that. It's going to be a little bit expensive, but all in all, fine. And since we are at 100% renewables, I think we can go for the synthetic feedstocks. And that should be okay. Our yield, artificial biomes are always good. Southern Africa? You're an interesting... Oh, we should actually check how is your electricity looking like, because last time we are seeing that we were doing too much coal because our expansion of renewables didn't quite match up to to the expectation of switching out the industry. That's starting to look better, so we should actually commit to more of that. And we might at the same time switch our, our transport system or synthetic feedstocks. I think transport system might be fine. Good. Works for me. That pretty much only leaves um, Oceania. Where we could go for the coal-free industry. By the way, how is the coal burning looking like in the world? I would at some point like to disallow coal. But if it's still very significant, yes. Still in these two areas, it's, it's somewhat significant to Southeast Asia. Are you still using coal in the industry? You are. Hmm. Still, all of these do make sense to me. Specifically, your electricity is still being not generated from only renewables, no. You're actually still burning coal, and you're burning coal in the industry. Okay, so all in all, that's pretty good. Um, let's take uh, the turn, the next turn, and, and see what's going to happen. And then we are going to put in a cut, but until then, I do want to see... Ooh, so temperatures are coming up again. Lunar colonies, colonies succeed, so that's very, very good. So after two months, 12 months, mankind's first lunar colony is a success. The men and women on the moon battled through more misfortunes and malfunctions than anyone thought possible. With their presence now stable, a new chapter opens. The chance to mine the moon for HE3, so helium-3, an isotope. Is there anything else we can play due to that? Could deploy first-generation fusion, but I think that's not... Oh, yeah, lunar HE3. Extraction. It has a very, very high um, chance of failure, but it would allow us to increase second generation max fusion expansion by, by quite a bit. So that will have to wait a while because we are not quite close to getting that. Um, but since it, the chance to or the risk of that is, is pretty high anyway, I think this is a good thing. And you can actually see global emissions 110 tons. Basically nothing. Basically nothing. We had basically zero emissions over here. So all of this should pretty much cancel out and we are a cr far cry away from, from what we had earlier. So that is extremely great to see. We actually see for the first time, I think temperatures actually coming down a little bit. Well, not quite for the first time, but that is very, very good news of all. So thank you very much for watching guys. I know it's been a little bit long episode, but I do want to get two turns in now because things are looking so great for us. And that is very, very nice to see, but notice, this is 100 years from where we started the game. Um, so climate change, really, really long-term topic and something that you do need to address. Do leave a like and all of that. And I do see you guys next time. Bye-bye.